been a conversation that's been happening consistently since week one happened and Dak Prescott got injured and you saw Cooper Rush come in and he won a game. Remember, he won a game in Minnesota. Can he's he do five it again? And, oh. and then he's keeps he, they keep winning when he's the quarterback. And now a lot of people, I get it. A lot of y'all out there are like, we understand Dak's the starting quarterback. Jerry Jones, Stephen Jones have said as much. However, y'all think that we lying about this. People keep asking us about Cooper Rush and about the winner that he is. And yeah. about what happens if Cooper Rush doesn't lose. Do you just keep going with the hot hand? So, Bobby, let's do the definitive Cooper Rush, Dak Prescott segment. Yeah, and I think that's the, the 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 best way for you to set it up is to say, do you keep going with the hot hand? Because I think the actual question there is, how hot is that hand? Is that hot hand even? Is the hand even hot? I don't... Is it like lukewarm? I don't even know that you can say lukewarm. He's doing what's asked of him. Absolutely. And... and Let's start. Let's. Can I pause real yeah, quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I don't want this to become a takedown of Cooper Rush. No, no, that, it's not that I definitely want it. Like, like he has been fantastic with in what they've asked him to do. In more ways than one, he right? has helped save the season a hundred percent. Honestly, I found myself liking Cooper Rush even more, like as a human, because he doesn't seem to buy in the hype either, right? Like he's no. like, look, man, I'm coming and I'm doing what I have to do. And as much as like I, I value this, and I, I wonder if other people value this as well. Them folks in the locker room seem to love that dude. They, they seem do. to really like the way that he gets down. And that matters when like it comes to stepping into a role. They believe in him in part because they like him and they know that he can do what they ask of him. But as you were starting to say, what they ask of him is fairly limited. Yeah, look, I mean, they're they're not going to ask him to go win football games for him. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, they're going to have to ask a little bit of him this week in that respect because you're, you're playing a really good football team. But with the defense... You know, keeping teams under 20 points to this point, it keeps getting better and better. It's 19 week one, 17, 16, 10, and 10. But like the defense has kept this team on a roll and Cooper Rush just hasn't put them in a bad position. That's what he deserves a lot of credit for. But if you just take a look at where he's at right now, we're talking about 61% completions in an era where you need to be completing closer to like two thirds of your passes, mm -hmm. especially if you're playing things underneath short and intermediate game like he is. All right. From His, the six, eight to, I have to pause real quick. Yeah. And I'm just going to keep doing this from six, eight to Cooper rush would have been 10 of 12 for 170 yards of Gallup and CD known drop passes. One drop passes happen Two, Are you really standing on the table for 170 yards? Is that what we're doing right now? I guess so. All right. I, I mean, that that's where we're at. Look, here's the other thing. The, the one of the arguments I keep hearing a lot is and like, I'm like that's even like that's a really uh that's that's a really healthy estimate of that the added yards that he would have gotten on those two passes. Oh yeah, no, that that was more like because he finished with one hundred two, and yeah. I think yeah, I think he had probably about 30, 40 yards there, and so that's not a sustainable way to win football games. If you look at over the last decade, look at the teams that have have won the Super Bowl almost universally. Their teams in the top 10 in passing yards. And if they're not in the top 10, they're in the top half. The only outlier is the Seahawks. They were ranked 26th, I think. And that's a Legion of Boom Seahawks with a historic defense. That's that's the Legion of Boom Seahawks, exactly. And you're talking about a team that was incredibly efficient mm. throwing it. When okay. they threw it, they were incredibly efficient. Uh Dallas right now ranks 21st in net yards per pass attempt. And the Seahawks that year, even though they were 27th in total passing yards, they were seventh in net yards per pass attempt, which means when they moved the ball, they moved it efficiently. And so Cooper Rush is somebody who's not lost two games. Basically what they're asking of, of him is, don't lose his football games. Don't turn the ball over. And we're going to ask you to take an occasional shot. When defenses give you a favorable look, we need you to take advantage of it. We need you to do just enough so that teams don't load up against the run and take that away. And to this point, he's done that. But you're seeing every week that it's just to the limit because he's getting closer and closer every week. The three and out drives are 
increasing every week. Yeah, the third not- da- the third down really is a huge portion of it. You making plays on third downs is part of like it's a large part of what makes this league. What what's the important factor in this league? And they haven't done that while he's been the quarterback. No, they're 29th in the NFL in third down conversion percentage. They're one of the worst teams in the NFL that, and that's unsustainable. As good as your defense is, you can't win like that consistently. It's just not going to work. So they're not able to sustain drives. They're not able to take advantage in large part to anything outside the numbers. Anything that's in the center of the field, he's pretty comfortable with, and he can do. And they've reduced his reads. They, they've reduced his responsibilities on these on these routes, and they've taken out some of these option routes. And, and it's a simpler read for him right now. And when they let him take shots downfield, they do so in max protect. They keep a bunch of guys in, give him time to drop back, scan the field, make it happen. And so in that sense, he's done his job. But if they asked literally anything more of him, this team would start to struggle and this team would start to fail. And it's a, it's a matter of what can Dak do for this offense that Cooper Rush can't. And it's a lot. If you look back over the games he played in 2019, mm-hmm. During those games, they were the number one offense in the NFL. During the 2020 season, in the five games he played there, over the course of those five weeks, they were the number one offense in the NFL. Last season, they were the number one offense in the NFL. We're talking about a three-year run of when Dak Prescott plays in games. The Cowboys have the number one offense in the NFL. And I know a lot of people will push back at that and go, what are the playoff wins? What has that gotten you? What is it? Fine. that You can say that all you want, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about... Which would you rather have with this defense? Would you rather have right. the guy who can lead the number one offense with this defense? Or I, I don't see how you can compute it and say taking a guy who's leading what is essentially the a bottom five offense right now is a better option for us just because. Yeah, and, and maybe that offense isn't the number one offense, you know, with the concerns that we've talked to, already discussed about with the wide receivers and like the, the playmakers that seemingly you would you would prefer that you had more of. I mean, an average offense would still put you in a significantly better place than you are right now. Um, And the point that I'll make um, is that Cooper Rush, yes, you know, people talked about like, you know, the the plays against the Giants, right? And I guess Minnesota going back to last year that Cooper Rush made. He's he's absolutely made a play or two here or there. A, A starting quarterback in this league for a good offense can't simply make one or two plays in a game. That's not enough. No, in this modern NFL, you have to be able to make more plays than that. And even if you do not feel like Dak Prescott is a top 10 quarterback in this league, you have to acknowledge that he is capable of making more than one or two plays in a football game. Also, considering that Cooper Rush has had some luck and I don't I don't I'm not one of the people that uses luck as a pejorative. Luck is something that happens in sports. It's, It's a portion of this. It's a part of the equation. And that factors in. But we also have to acknowledge when when those things are luck. And Cooper Rush has had some luck in the efficiency that he has had. If some of these things break the wrong way, which happens from time to time, he looks significantly worse as a player when we talk about a couple of takeaways, and which is one of the things that we're really giving him credit for is that not turning the football over. There's been some opportunities to take the football away that it, he, they've gotten for, fortunate on and you're happy that you've been fortunate on but i think you have to consider that in your decision making process yeah because that's that luck isn't gonna you know you know that will run out eventually it's you know the regression to the mean like like you're eventually gonna catch up with you and you're gonna start turning over the ball and you know we look at the fact that even at you know 61 percent completions i know a lot of people say well he's had drops and he's mm-hmm. had this and this hasn't helped him out his completion percentage over expected is negative 2.8 right now, which means his completion percentage is 2.8% lower than what it should be based on advanced analytics. You know who that's just behind in terms of who's been better this year? Who's that? Carson Wentz at negative ah, 2.3. That's fun. Dak Prescott last year, for all the complaints about how he played and and it was a bunch of you know empty stats and he's not actually accurate and he's terrible. Dak Prescott ranked fifth in the NFL last year in completion percentage over expectation. He was plus 2.2 around guys like Aaron Rodgers and Joe Burrow. That's where you want to be. And especially with a a group of receivers right now that you don't feel like you can rely on. You want to make sure that your quarterback play is as good as possible. Absolutely. And with this defense. I think the, the difference is you look at who they've played this year. I don't think they lose any of the games with Dak that they won with Cooper Rush. 
And I don't think they win against Tampa Bay with Cooper Rush as opposed to Dak Prescott. Oh, I can't imagine that being the case. Unless the only thing that you might be able to say is with Cooper Rush, they would be they would force themselves to play a slightly different style of football. But I also don't nece- know necessarily how that puts more points on the board for you. It doesn't. And, and I think you look at the Giants game. They win 23-16. They score 40 that game if Dak is playing. They, they beat the Commanders 25-10. They score 40 if Dak is playing. And again, you say... What does that matter, though? They, they won either way. So what does it matter if they're scoring 40? And yada, yada, Because what it matters is is you're going to run into these teams that Dak could have scored 40 against, that Cooper Rush scores 24 against, and you gave up 27. That's where it matters. Absolutely. I and mean, that's the difference between a, a playoff contender and a Super Bowl contender. And now this is the place where I will venture in a place that maybe folks will feel a little bit uncomfortable with because it would seem like I'm down in the defense and I don't want to come off that way. However, hater. How reasonable is it to expect the defense to hold every team to 20? It's not. Like, I mean, they'll, they'll break eventually. That's just the nature of it. But I, I don't think, I, I think that you could reasonably expect maybe that they'll average holding teams under 20 points per Which game. Which is fantastic. Year. It's still incredible defense, and I never want that to get skewed. Yeah, it's great. How how great was the Legion of Boom? Fantastic, right? Yeah, I, I put it up there. It's one of the historic defenses in this league. They gave up. Uh, let's see here. What did they give up? They gave up 20 points. Uh, one, two, three, four, five times that year. They gave up 34 in one game. So even as great as they were, that's, that's just the nature of the beast. Eventually you're going to give up points. You're, you're going to have an off day. You're going to find that luck that you talk about. It's going to click one day for the other team. And you need a quarterback that can compete with that. The Broncos in recent years, when the Broncos were really great, and that defense in 2015 that carried an awful Peyton Manning yeah, to I liked, a Super Bowl. I like to call him Williams Manning that year because it didn't look like the Peyton I knew, right? Like it looked like a different dude. He was throwing out, he was throwing ducks. Like didn't have it was it was brutal strength and all that. Denver gave up 20 points in half their games. You're talking about something that is not sustainable. Mm-hmm. It, they, they can be that good. They can average that. They can they can be a top notch defense. It's not reasonable to expect, well, Cooper Rush putting up 20 points every game will we'll win it for you. No, like you're still looking at probably five or six losses during the season if you do that. Um, This is, I feel like this basically sums it up from Donna Vank 12 on the Twitch chat. I apologize if I pronounced that wrong. Can Dak bring in a more explosive offense and then combine, combine that with his defense? Sounds like a Super Bowl contender. And that feels like it is basically. That's what the question is. That that's that's what you're grappling with right now. And by the way, two and four, y'all are trashing Cooper Rush on the low. No, we're not. We genuinely are just talking about what limitations are. What are your expectations? Do you want to get by or do you want to contend for a Super Bowl? If the expectations contend for a Super Bowl, Cooper Rush, good as he's been and, and what they've asked him to do, he doesn't meet that threshold. And mind you, I if if you view that as trashing. It, would you consider that tragic for any other backup quarterback? The idea that a backup quarterback can come in and do what you ask of him no. and be able to like hold the fort down. like That is what you want from any backup quarterback. And what you've seen from him is that he has been more than capable of doing that. I think when you're talking about a backup quarterback, but when you then put him within the, within the framework of a starting quarterback, which I think a lot of people are starting to do, once you start doing that, the, the expectations have to be different. And when you have that level of expectations, he doesn't meet up to that. And that is not a problem because I am not trying to put him in the framework of a starting quarterback. I'm trying to keep him within the framework of a backup quarterback. But once you start having that quarterback conversation, you have to evaluate him like a starter. And in that place, he doesn't meet up. And that's not a shade to him because that would be on us for putting him in the wrong place for evaluation. Yeah. No. And look, look, I think if there's one thing you can say, Reggie, I don't know where you fell down this. Do you believe in, in clutch? Do you believe in that? Here, here's how I define clutch. Clutch okay. to me is just steely nerves. Like you don't wilt is what it is. I don't think there's an elevation in crunch. I think others feel pressure and have that psychological effect and you just stay the same. Okay. And it appears as if you're elevating. I'll give Cooper Rush credit for this. Moment's not too big for him. Absolutely. Moment has not been too big for him 100%. in five games that he started. And and he has done a... And, and honestly... The rest of this team has fed off of that. They have not wilted because they see a steady hand there. It would have been really easy to fall apart, and they didn't. Do we feel like we've answered this? Do we feel like, because, I mean, do we feel like we made this definitive segment that we were looking to make it? I think so. Okay. And, and I think that for those of you who have said it before, that nobody's out there saying Cooper Rush should start, or you guys should just check out the text line sometime. Yeah. Because there's plenty of people here right now Trust who think us. we're just trashing it. I, I think we've tried very hard to make it apparent that we don't want to trash a Cooper Rush. We like him. We, he's done a great job. 
And but the thing about it is you could still hear the folks that are like clamoring and ultimately you're entitled to your opinion. But we're trying to give you as informed a as informed an opinion as we can here. And that's what we've done here to try and set that standard or set that uh, expectation properly in a right for a Cooper Rush and for this Cowboys team. Trying to trying to give you all 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 the, the best information. You know, what, I missed I missed the opportunity. We was just trying to get you right on the get right with Reggie KG on 105 through the fan.